If you can solve this, I'll give you my position. But I doubt a high school dropout like you can manage it. Uh, what's the matter? Go ahead and try. At the company social event, the department head, Brian, challenged me with a difficult math problem. He clearly believed there was no way I could solve it, so he was smirking. Michael, a Kyoto University graduate, was also laughing and mocking me. I hesitated for a moment, then started working through the equations in my head. Um, I solved it. The Maclaurin series expansion for log, 1 plus x, the answer is minus 1. What? Did you solve that in your head? Who is this guy? I thought he was a high school dropout. Brian and Michael were making a fuss. They were probably wondering how someone like me could solve a difficult math problem. My name is David Smith, a 26-year-old man. I recently secured a job. But I'm just working as a temp. As an unskilled worker, I couldn't land a full-time position. I've been assigned to a large IT company. It seems to be a very busy place where they can't manage without temp workers. Everyone was intensely focused on their monitors, and the desks were littered with energy drinks, showing just how busy it was. I was worried about being assigned to such a demanding company. The atmosphere was heavy and somber, and no one was chatting idly. I understood that the workplace isn't a place for socializing, so there was no time for idle chatter, but it didn't seem friendly or open either. But as a temp worker, I had no say in the company culture. All I could do was perform the tasks assigned to me. When I went to greet Brian on my first day, he looked at me and laughed. Are you David, the temp starting today? Do your best, we're very busy here. Although, I doubt someone like you can handle it. Um, yeah. Aren't you a high school dropout? Why would they send a dropout here? Everyone here is a graduate of elite universities. They're all from national colleges or reputable private ones. The temp agency must be out of their minds. I'll do my best, thank you. Sure, sure. Try your best. Not that I expect much. I thought he seemed mean. Actually, he was mean. I came here determined to do my best, so why did he have to talk to me like that? Starting off with such negativity was really disheartening. I was shown to my seat, which the previous occupant had left in a terrible state. The desk was a mess, with dirt and stains everywhere. I was so frustrated by how filthy the desk was that I wanted to ask the previous user what they did to make it this dirty. There were coffee stains, eraser shavings, and blue and black ink smudges, possibly from leaking pens. There were also what looked like snack crumbs, making it extremely unsanitary, so I borrowed some alcohol spray and scrubbed the desk clean. Even though I couldn't remove all the stains, it looked a bit better. Next to me sat a man named Michael. He had oily side parted hair and wore a slim suit. He had good looks, like someone you might see in a movie. Michael explained the tasks I needed to do, and I got started. Well, someone like you probably can't handle this, though. What he said made me feel bad. It's true that I'm at the bottom. I've drifted from job to job without a solid work history. As a temp worker drifting from job to job at my age, I must seem like the lowest of the low to the full-time employees at large companies. But I thought it was unnecessary to say that at first meeting. Annoyed, but grateful for the instructions, I quietly got to work. The tasks were straightforward and monotonous, so I started feeling drowsy. Staring at the monitor for so long made my mind feel foggy and my eyes tired. I managed to complete my assigned tasks on the first day and went home. The next day, I was pleasantly surprised to learn they were holding a welcome party for me. I felt a bit happy, thinking maybe even someone like me was being welcomed. There were other temp workers too, and it seemed like the party was for all of us, but the others were mostly part-time housewives. I was the only man and felt a bit embarrassed, but I appreciated being welcomed. Excited about which restaurant we would go to, I worked hard that day. The welcome party was held at a nice izakaya. The housewives mentioned they rarely had the chance to drink outside due to family responsibilities, so they were happy to enjoy the event. They probably left all the household duties to their husbands for the evening. As a single person, I didn't mind staying out late, but I realized how tough it must be for housewives with families. The food at the party was lavish. Even though it was an izakaya, it was a fancy one, serving sashimi with whole fish and fatty tuna. 
When I tried to eat some fatty tuna, Michael quickly snatched it away and smiled mockingly. Then. This is too good for a high school dropout. He said, eating it with relish. I thought, what a jerk, and felt angry. When I tried to eat some silver-skinned fish, Brian took it all with his chopsticks and ate it gleefully. The silver-skinned fish here is amazing. The texture is perfect. Ah, beer and sashimi after work are the best. Oh, sorry, did you want some? My bad. Oh, no, it's fine. A high school dropout like you shouldn't be eating this anyway. Here, have some garnish, like this radish. It's delicious. No, thanks. How about this chrysanthemum, then? No, thanks. Brian kept offering me the garnish and the chrysanthemum from the sashimi. I didn't want to eat that, and it made me angry to think he was doing it on purpose to be mean. Why did I have to be treated this way at a welcome party? They were kind to the other temp workers but cold to me. They must think a male temp worker is the lowest of the low. Maybe that's how society sees it. There's a tendency to believe men should work full-time and be strong breadwinners. Even though I think everyone should have their own way of working, that old-fashioned view still lingers. Brian was drinking heavily and was very drunk. He probably had around five bottles of beer, and I was worried just watching him. Michael was also drinking a lot and was already quite drunk. I thought it was ridiculous that they were getting drunk at a party meant for the temp workers. The two of them started bragging about their past achievements, acting all superior. Apparently, Brian graduated from the University of Tokyo and Michael from Kyoto University. They were comparing their entrance exam scores. Brian boasted about scoring 85% on the math section of the common test, while Michael said he got 95% in math and English on the center test. Listening to their intellectual boasting was boring, and the other temp workers looked very uncomfortable. Brian was about 55 years old, and Michael was 36. It was sad to see them bragging about past glories at their ages. But they probably didn't realize how pathetic they seemed and kept bragging. I originally studied science but switched to humanities, so I'm good at math. That's why I scored 85% on the math section of the common test. Even though I'm a humanities student. And I got a perfect score in English too. That's impressive, Brian. You're the best. Oh come on, Michael, flattery won't get you anywhere. No, seriously, it's amazing. Being good at math even after switching to humanities. And you graduated from the University of Tokyo. And you graduated from Kyoto University, the pride of the West. There's no way we can beat the University of Tokyo. That's not true. Kyoto University is the best in Kansai and it's known for its liberal atmosphere, producing all kinds of geniuses and unique characters. Well, there are certainly a lot of quirky people. We have costume graduations and even hot pot parties during classes. The University of Tokyo has more of the bookworm types, so it's a bit different, but both are great universities. And Sarah, you graduated from a good university too, right? Ha! Huh? Suddenly addressed, Sarah, a woman holding a kalpas sour, placed it on the table. She looked puzzled. Sarah, didn't you graduate from the School of Engineering Science at Osaka University? Were there few girls? Yes, that's right. Engineering is usually full of men. Yes, there are many men. Sarah graduated from Osaka University with a degree in science. That means there are three graduates from former imperial universities here. As expected from a top-tier company, the employees' educational backgrounds are impressive. The University of Tokyo is Japan's top university, Kyoto University is the leading national university in Kansai, and Osaka University is a former imperial university known for its strong science programs. I'm sure if I look around, I'll find more graduates from other former imperial universities or prestigious private universities. Among the temp staff, there might be someone who is now primarily a housewife but actually graduated from Keio University or Wazita University. I had heard rumors that we had to be smart to be sent to this company, so I assumed that was the case. Then Brian looked at me and started saying something mean with a grin. Hey David, are you good at math? Uh, I think I'm okay. He says he's okay. A high school dropout who says he's good at math. 
Being good at math means graduating from an engineering department. A high school dropout's idea of being good at math is probably solving quadratic equations. Yes, as a high school dropout, his level is probably just quadratic equations and linear functions. Michael laughed obnoxiously. I didn't understand what was so funny. I was just answering seriously, not joking around. I was really good at math in school, so that's what I said. Then Brian took out paper and a pen from his bag and started writing something. It turned out to be a math problem. Can you solve this? It's a tough one. If you solve it, I'll give you my position, you high school dropout. Ha ah, ha, there's no way he can solve that. Brian, that's too mean. Come on, Michael. He'll never solve it anyway. I quickly responded. No, this is not difficult. What? Are you kidding? This is a really tough problem. No, I'll solve it right now, just give me a few seconds. Is this guy serious? You're nuts, you can't solve it in your head. What are you talking about? Um, I solved it. The Maclaurin series expansion for log, 1 plus x, the answer is minus 1. What? Did you solve that in your head? Who is this guy? I thought he was a high school dropout. He really solved it in his head. And the answer is correct? What the hell? This doesn't make any sense. Brian and Michael looked at me in shock. I felt a bit proud and almost started humming. Wow. David, you really are good at math. Solving such a tough problem in seconds, you're a genius. Who are you really? Tell us. The beautiful Sarah approached me, eager to know my true identity. I decided to reveal it. Well, I'm actually the engineer who founded Megacorp in the US. What? Megacorp, the famous SNS company? Yes, that's right. Megacorp, the company behind Instant and Faceline. What? Are you saying this guy is the founder of that famous Megacorp? I don't believe it. Whether you believe it or not is up to you, but I really am the founder of Megacorporation. Though, I left the company for various reasons. So, did you graduate from a famous university and hide it to work here as a temp? No, I dropped out of high school, the American equivalent. I stopped attending middle school and couldn't go back. So you lived in the US? Yes, I was born and raised in the US. No way. He's a returnee student. Yes, I was a returnee student. Although I was born and raised in America and I didn't really feel like Japan was my home country, technically, I was a returnee. My parents ran a business in the US, so I was born in New York. I had friends until elementary school, but when I entered high school, I was bullied by the jocks. Jocks are the popular, outgoing types at the top of the social hierarchy. Mostly, they were on the rugby team and were big and strong. Being small and skinny, I became a target for the jocks, who would hide my things and verbally abuse me in the locker room. After such experiences, I started hating school. There was nothing enjoyable about going to school, so I began skipping classes. My parents were worried but didn't force me to go to school, they just watched over me. By 8th grade, I had completely stopped attending school and stayed home. My main companion at that time was the computer my parents bought me out of concern. I learned programming by trial and error and made my own games. I also thought it would be fun to create a website where people could vote on who was the most handsome or beautiful. The jocks who bullied me weren't particularly good looking. I thought it would be interesting to see their reactions if they ranked lowest, so I created and published the site. At first, I thought it would be nice if even a few people were interested, but the site became unexpectedly popular. And soon everyone at my school was using it. That site became Faceline, a SNS. Initially, it was just for comparing faces at my school, but other schools also wanted to join, so I made it public. Gradually, Faceline gained popularity, and many people started using it. Now, it's used worldwide, but it started as something I made for fun. I also created Instant, a photo-sharing SNS. I liked photography, influenced by my father, who often used a camera. During a visit to Japan, I saw women joyfully taking photos of food with their phones. At first, I wondered why they were photographing food, but I realized Japanese food is cute. The presentation and decoration are elaborate, unlike the large servings of desserts in America. 
I thought a photo sharing SNS might become popular in Japan, so I created Instant. As expected, it became popular in Japan. Initially, American celebrities used it to share snippets of their lives, inspiring Japanese women to post their own glamorous lifestyles. They shared pictures of their parties, beach outings, and stays at luxury hotels. There were plenty of delicious-looking food and drinks in these photos. It seemed everyone loved photographing food. This became popular when I was 16. By then, I had already dropped out of school, which is the equivalent of a high school dropout in Japan. At 16, I had my own company and could live comfortably. In America, high school dropouts often have to live in poverty. But I was lucky enough to have a knack for business, so I avoided that fate. My parents were initially worried, but seeing my business succeed reassured them. As a result of my success in business, I received offers from Harvard and Stanford to join them as a professor. They wanted me to teach programming in the engineering department and business strategies in the economics department. But I wasn't comfortable speaking in front of people, and those jocks had gotten into those universities through recommendations. So I declined the offers. One day, when everything was going smoothly, my father suddenly passed away in an accident. He was hit by a drunk driver on his way home from work. My mother and I were devastated and had to discuss what to do next. Without my father, the business he ran was over. There were tasks only he could handle, so we decided to close the business. I felt numb and couldn't manage Megacorp anymore, so I handed it over to someone else. Looking back, I think I didn't need to give up the company. Running a SNS company can be done from anywhere. My mother and I decided to return to Japan, but I could have continued the company even after returning to Japan. After all, I had been working from home even when I was in the US. When I returned to Japan at 18, I was met with harsh reality. In Japan, the new graduate card is powerful, and deviating from the path is not acceptable. Dropouts, job hoppers, those who took gap years or repeated years, all faced harsh judgment. Unlike the US, where you can succeed with your skills alone, I felt stifling with its need for conformity in Japan. Having handed over Megacorp, I registered with a temp agency to work in Japan. The temp agency staff looked at my resume and half-laughingly asked if I was really the founder of Megacorporation. They probably didn't believe me. I kept saying, that company was mine. Haha, ha, sure. I felt a bit offended by their dismissive laughter. Realizing that no one would believe a teenager could create such a thing, I decided to play the role of a high school dropout. There was no point in bragging about my impressive background, so I decided to do my best as an underdog. So, I have been playing the role of a high school dropout. I did drop out, but I have plenty of assets. By the way, Brian, you studied science before switching to law at the University of Tokyo, right? That's why you're good at science and working in this IT company? Yeah, that's right. Then math should be easy for you. And Michael, you graduated from Kyoto University with a degree in science, so this should be simple for you too. Uh, well. I borrowed Brian's paper and pen and quickly wrote a math problem. Brian and Michael were struggling with the problem, groaning. Um, if it's greater than 3, there's no integer solution, so this won't work. No, it works if it's 2. Damn it, what's going on? How are we supposed to prove this? I thought, they can't even solve this simple problem, and watched them with a smirk. It might seem mean, but since Brian and Michael had been the ones to bully me first, I felt it was fair to enjoy their struggle. The other temp workers watched Brian and Michael rack their brains, smirking in amusement. They might have thought, these guys aren't so great after all. Then Sarah, the Osaka University graduate, muttered quietly. Wait, you can't solve this? Isn't that bad? Sarah. So, can you solve it, Sarah? Yes, let me see it. Um, assuming square root 3 is a rational number, then, and substituting these back into the original equation. Sarah solved the problem I had given her quickly and effortlessly. She seemed to be genuinely enjoying herself. I thought she must be a true science enthusiast. I had learned programming, engineering, statistics, science, mathematics, computer science, and business on my own, so I wasn't very confident. But I felt I was at least better than Brian and Michael. When Sarah finished solving the problem, she asked me how she did. Since her answer was correct, I told her, that's correct, and she looked very pleased. 
Yay! I'm so happy. That was fun, David. No, no, but still, it's amazing you could solve that so quickly, Sarah. You're incredible. Oh no, I'm not as good as you, David. I was a bit nervous, wondering if I was remembering how to prove it correctly. But you got the right answer, so be confident. Yes. Thank you. It felt like being a student again, and I had a lot of fun. No problems. I thank you. As Sarah and I chatted happily, Brian and Michael looked frustrated. Maybe they had been interested in Sarah. But Michael aside, Brian was already married. It was pretty creepy for a married man like him to have feelings for a woman in her 20s. The welcome party ended, but Brian and Michael had gloomy expressions. Maybe they were upset about not solving the problem, or perhaps they were saddened by Sarah's comment about their inability to solve it. Either way, they looked pitiful. I started to feel a bit sorry for Brian and Michael, but I knew showing pity wouldn't help, so I looked at them coldly. Later, Brian and Michael got reprimanded by the bosses for their harassment towards me. This company was strict about moral conduct, and such behavior was severely punished. Brian was demoted. Michael had subordinates, but he was eventually replaced by one of them and is now sidelined. I continued working as a temp for another year. Then, the company offered me a full-time position, and I accepted. By that time, Brian had been transferred to a remote location due to another issue, and Michael had quit because he couldn't stand being sidelined. This made the work environment much more comfortable for me. Sarah, meanwhile, was very capable, worked hard, and even got promoted. She also advocated for changes to improve the company atmosphere, like banning unpaid overtime and punishing harassment. Making the workplace much brighter. Thanks to your efforts, Sarah, the company has really changed. Even though you're busy with work, you still do so much for everyone. Thank you. Not a problem, it's important for me to have a good environment. But isn't it tough? Doing all these things while working? Not at all. I really wanted to change things. You see, I was bullied too. What? I couldn't say it at the welcome party, but I was bullied until high school. People called me gloomy and weird, so I could hardly go to school. But I wanted to prove them wrong, so I focused on studying. And you got into a national university, Sarah. You're really smart. No, not really. You're the smart one, David, doing everything self-taught. It turned out Sarah had also been bullied. She wasn't always as cheerful as she is now and had been considered gloomy. In high school, she was bullied by the popular girls and had a hard time every day. But she didn't give in, attending school minimally and studying hard at home. Her family wasn't wealthy, so they couldn't afford to send her to supplemental classes or private universities. She had to get into a national university. She aimed for Osaka University, the closest national university she could commute to from home. Sarah and I grew closer, and we decided to visit her family during the next summer break. Her family's house was indeed old and run down, but her parents were kind and wonderful people. Growing up in such a warm household, it was clear why Sarah was so kind. Hearing her speak in her native Osaka dialect, which she usually didn't use, felt special. It was like seeing a side of her only I knew. We started dating and, a year later, we got married. It might seem like a miracle that someone like me, without even a high school diploma, could end up with a university graduate like her. Even after our marriage, she continued to work hard, earning as much as any man. I didn't want her to overwork herself and once told her, if it gets too tough, you can quit your job. I'll take care of us. But she never considered quitting. However, a year after our marriage, one morning, she looked unwell. I thought she might be overworking herself. Thanks to her efforts, there was no overtime, but the workload had increased. Finishing everything within working hours became crucial, making the job more intense. Hey, you don't look so good. Maybe you should see a doctor? No, I'm fine. A good breakfast will fix me right up. But? I'm really worried about you. You worry too much about everything. Don't underestimate me. All right, if you say so. Even though she put on a brave face, after breakfast, Sarah ran to the bathroom. I got really worried and rushed to the bathroom, then took her to the hospital. 
The doctor said there was nothing wrong with her stomach and gave her an IV drip. I wondered what it could be, so I checked online and saw the word pregnancy, and I thought that might be the case. I decided to take the day off and take her to a gynecologist. That's when we found out she was pregnant. She was already three months pregnant, and the baby seemed to be growing well. I was overjoyed at the thought of becoming a dad. We're going to have a new member to the family. Sarah said with happy tears in her eyes. She worked up until the very end of her pregnancy and then gave birth to our child. Once she entered the stable phase of her pregnancy, her health improved, allowing her to work. Her recovery after childbirth was smooth, and she quickly regained her strength. It was probably because she was still in her 20s. In my teenage years, I never imagined I'd find such happiness. Back when I was struggling at school, I felt hopeless, thinking nothing good would ever come. After my father's accident and our move to Japan, I was filled with the sadness of never being able to return to America. In Japan, I decided to live as an underdog and took jobs considered lowly. I worked as a traffic controller and a restroom cleaner. But these jobs, while often looked down upon, are essential for a comfortable life. When I worked these jobs, I'd go into convenience stores and hear high school girls saying I smelled or was dirty. But without people doing traffic control or cleaning, everyone would be in trouble. They only wanted clean jobs, but it's the so-called lowly jobs that allow everyone to live well. Even when I was tempying at various companies, I always felt excluded. I was often told, you can't do this because you're just a temp, or the temps were incompetent, which hurt. I used to think that if only I had a degree, I wouldn't be in this situation, but it was too late for that. The past can't be changed, so I had to live with my reality. But how about now? I'm surrounded by family and incredibly happy. I've never felt more blessed in my life. Sure, there were tough times, but the joy of living outweighs them. It's important to never give up, no matter how hard life gets. Things will work out. I plan to keep working hard at this company, and I want to make sure that if someone without a degree joins, they won't be discriminated against. I know how it feels to be treated that way, and I don't want to do it to others. I'm looking forward to seeing who comes in for interviews, as I've been appointed an interviewer. I plan to focus on their true potential.